Hey y'all, man, Manga Boy here. You guys know that one? It's a little obscure. It's uh, John Tron Jr. That used to be a thing. It used to be a thing back in the day, but then John Tron came back. Anyways, we've got part two of a haul here. Uh, where is it? Three. This is part three, <laughs> technically. I did these in a little sporadic bursts. So this first one here is from the thrift bookstore. I believe I got it from Amazon, and they said that the copy was in uh, very good shape. This copy is laminated, library stickers all over the place. It is yellow, it is stamped, the binding is falling apart. <laughs> I would not call this good, or I would not call this very good. I might try again. This Hikaru Go volume is actually out of print. It's number seven. So it's hard to find it, but I think I'm going to keep looking. This one I got from Indigo, the Canadian store. See indigo.com. Let's open her up. Yeah, this is actually the third set because I, I had one before my big one, and then this is like the cap off the big one of January. I got it just in the last nick of time. Okay, Indigo, what did he get for me? Thank you. Happy holidays. Oh, thank you, Indigo. That is so nice of you. There's a little Poon Poon guy there. Poon Poon is supposed to be depressing. I haven't read it yet. But it's on my to-do list. Let me fix my camera here. It's drifting a bit. Let's lock that puppy down. There we go. I like the, the pen they wrote that with. It's very shiny. Very cool. Happy holidays to everybody also. You know, happy new year and such. Well, they did a decent job with this wrapping here. We got all these little papers. We got some bubble wrap. Let's put it all together. Let's just Now we've got these also individually wrapped. I suck with this. I'm like a monster when I come through these. I try to open it up nice and carefully. And you know what happens? I just I just ripped it like crazy. That's just it's just the way I'm built, I guess. I don't know. I made to be a bowl. See? It's like I tried. So this is uh, scientific, a certain scientific rogue number three. It's bagged. It looks so nice. This is a good bag. This may make me want to do more bags. <laughs> I live in the Northeast, so I don't typically bag my manga because I kind of worry that. I know it's a little dry, but then there's rainy seasons up here, so you never know how it's going to roll. Number seven. This is actually really hard to get. I got these all four actually for a decent deal. I think it was like 60 bucks, and like usually number seven runs for like 70 on its own. So I jumped on that as fast as I could. I got it. It was listed on eBay, and I was like, "What is this real? Are these really bad?" And I was looking at the pictures, like they look pretty good. I don't know why no one's bought this, so I got it. Here's number nine. Again, I, I don't know what bags these are, but let me get this in focus, but they're very nice. Mess up the camera focus too, which is pretty good. And the last one, I, I think you guys can figure what series this is from. I'm trying really hard not to rip this thing up like crazy. This is a big boy. Number 10. Certain scientific real gun. So I actually... I am all caught up in a certain scientific railgun now, and I'm also caught up in a certain scientific accelerator. The only one I'm not caught up in is the main series, A Certain Magical Index. Uh, I probably want to read that one first, so that's the one that I'm going to try to get. Next time there's a sale with it, I'm going to probably buy the rest of it. It's published by Yen Press, so if there's a Yen Press of sale, I'll probably jump on it. Then, but otherwise, I'll just keep my eye on it. I've had a long enough to be red list. <laughs> okay. Ooh, first up, how heavy are the dumbbells you lift? 
right on top there. Let's see if we've got other ones. I don't see them. So here's three and four. I've already read these. If you've seen my manga um, log, weekly log of last week, you'll know that I loved it. It's amazing. If anybody wants to read this and they're like, eh, I don't know, you definitely should jump on it. The art is hilarious. They have these facial expressions that are just like so over the top. The plot is pretty much the main character doesn't want to get fat. <laughs> and so it's just like a slice of life with like a lot of good comedy. And they tell you how to like weightlift actually too and some good tips for dieting and everything like that. So it's really worth reading just to even expand your knowledge. The Quintessential Quintuplets, number 10. Um, you know, I actually read the first volume of this, and I didn't like it that much. Why didn't I like it that much? It just was, like, kind of standard and average. I read the second volume, um, I felt like it was a little bit better. But still, I'm not getting that, like, great vibes that, like, this is amazing. So we'll have to see how it goes from there. What do we got in here at the bottom? I think it is how heavier the dumbbells you lift. So let's get those out of the way. And quintessential quintuplets. I, I like the big boxes better because I can kind of see what's going on a little bit more. Okay, Cutie Honey. I know there's only one Cutie Honey in here. So this is Cutie Honey A Go-Go by Go Nagai. I don't know if he named it like that after himself or what. I'm just checking the, the corners for any hidden books like last time. They're sneaky like that these days, evidently. But Honey, uh, Cutie Honey A Go-Go right here is written by the guys who've done Devilman and Neon Genesis Evangelion. See, we've got Shinpei Ito, Hideki Anno, and Go Nagai. Go Nagai came up with the original concept, and this is kind of like a continuation of it, or a retelling. I don't know much about it. I never grew up with uh, Honey, Cutie Honey, but apparently it's a very popular uh, girls manga. She's like a superhero android. So I'm interested to kind of get a little cultured. That's pretty much why I bought that one. I like the other Gona guy works like Devil Man, Crybaby, and stuff, so I figured put the H. So here's Quintessential Quintuplets, 5 through 9. One thing I really do like about the um, Quintessential Quintuplets already is the actual cover designs and the spines. You know, I think it's really cool. So, 5, for example, is green and it has her on it. And then there will be a mirroring. Uh, volume where she's in a wedding dress and it's like a lighter color green. Same thing with six. And the main concept is they try to figure out who married the main character from the beginning. He's like getting married and then they flash back to the story. So there's number seven. See how she's in a wedding dress. I think it's number one. It's or number two is her on the main cover, and it's like a yellow cover. The backs are pretty much all the same. Here's number eight. Let's see, it's a little pink with the butterfly thingies. I don't know what the heck those things are. <laughs> the students become the teachers. And it's now an anime. Here's number nine. I think I just have to get more involved, because like right now I have a hard time remembering everybody's name for the most part. It's like, I don't know. It's just because there's five of them, you know, so. Then you have the main character and his sister. And it's a little overwhelming for me. Whereas, how heavy are the dumbbells you lift? It starts off with one, and then one becomes two, two becomes three. It just kind of goes kind of slow like that, so you get to get familiar with everyone. But again, I highly recommend reading this series. There's a nice Jason Statham reference in number four, which I was dying laughing at. It's right at the end, and I couldn't even believe it. Machi Maho, I messed up and made the wrong girl a magical girl. Wrong person. Uh, this one I got for the concept of loan. They, this creature finds this really nice, sweet, innocent looking girl, gives her magical girl powers to save the universe. She ends up being a huge delinquent. She smokes cigarettes, drinks alcohol. She's a high school student who skips school all the time. She's like a total, total punk. And <laughs> so I can't wait to read it just based on that premise. 
Dragon Quest Monsters Plus. I heard that this is super good. I think there's five volumes of it. I got the whole set, but I didn't get number one in yet, so I have to wait for that. But I'm excited to read it. Everybody says that this is one of the best Dragon Quest manga, and it has no right being as good as it is, so I can't wait to see what that's about. Alright, next up. Let's see if I can use my bear monkey hands here. Oh, oh. Look at that. I got that strength. I got that Kong strength. That monkey strength. Monk. Who are you guys voting for Godzilla vs. King Kong? Please comment below. I'm going full monk. That's, I think that's the only thing that makes sense to me. I love the memes to it too, right about now. You know, spicy iguana versus uh, that orangutan who will win. <laughs> it cracks me up. <laughs> I like, die. I die over it. And like, there's a resurgence of the Dragon Ball Z memes now too. You guys probably already saw it, but the, the monkey holding Bulma's hand and it says this is what Frieza sees when she sees her, uh, and he sees Frieza. That when Frieza sees Bulma and Vegeta walking, <laughs> like I died. <laughs> oh man! All right, what do we have in box number two? I like the big ones better because then I can kind of sort through it a bit easier. Give you guys more of a streamline here. Oh, we got some food wars. That's a nice trick. I actually got these because they were um, discounted on the daily deals. I don't have any other Food Wars, and I watched the entire anime. I really did not like the ending. You know, I like the the blue arc, though. I thought that was cool. Except for the... Uh, it started to get too crazy. Like, this girl's got chainsaws, and this other guy's got, like, these weird knives. I'm like, what the heck? is going on so that's kind of that was what kind of turned me off of that arc so people say that the manga ending is really bad but i'd still like to see <clears throat> so here's 35 and 34 these are the only three food wars that i own i'll get the whole set uh just because i want to reread it i didn't think i actually would because i i just disliked the ending so much but Ended up changing my mind and saying, you know what, the rest of the story was pretty good. It's probably even better. And plus, look at that. Look at that cover match. I love those those run-on covers like this. That looks so cool. I wish more manga did that. So Nura in the Yokai Clan, or Demon Yokai Parade, something like that. I forget the entire name of it. But the whole, every cover is just a run-on cover like that. So if you line up the volumes, they all match. It's pretty neat to see. The whole concept though, it's a uh, hundred even night parade, so that's kind of why. Let me rearrange these. But this is more Machi Maho. I turned the wrong girl into a magical girl, or wrong person to a magical girl. This is um, not one through seven, but you know, it's one through seven is what I got in total so far. The backs are a little risque, <laughs> but you can see how she's like this beast demon. She's smoking a cigarette there. And I don't know who these characters are in the back, but like, man, they are wearing some fancy clothes, that's for sure. See, there you go again. YouTube, don't get me. Don't get me, YouTube. Number five. I've got no idea why she's wearing some boy's jacket on this one, but I'm here for it. <laughs> it's probably that guy's jacket if I had to guess. And I don't know if this is the same character or if this is a demon or what, but she looks effing crazy. So that'll be an interesting read for sure. And then number seven. Number seven looks a little bit more tame for the series. <laughs> okay, you can kind of already see Devil's a part timer in there, but let's not start there. Let's pretend like you don't see it, okay? Let's keep going. And pick out something completely different. 
Ah, yes, this will be perfect. Let me just sort them up. I know last time I kind of sorted them all on the paper, but this time we're going to sort them all on camera because I feel like that that's less interesting. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 11 and 12. The quintessential quintuplets. I know what you're thinking. Man, man, manga boy, you bought all those books and you only think it's okay. I know, man, right? <clears throat> That's what I get for trusting the public opinion. So here you can see number two, it's that same character with a brighter color yellow. The other one was more of a pastel yellow, which I really do like that kind of a motif. I'd like two more than, than one, so hopefully three, I like more than two, and it kind of continues that trend. Otherwise, I'm gonna look like a fool, but that's okay. You know, you live, you learn. Here's number four with the headphones, girl. Nope, it's on camp. And we're gonna have a few more of these wedding pictures here. Number 11. See, I think it's this girl. I think that's who he marries, is this one. But I don't really know, so it's not spoilers, because that's just my thought. There's number 12 with him proposing. Hidden feelings. And then Seraph of the End, Vampire Ring, number 18. I know this might seem like a little bit of a twist, you know, to have this in right after the Quintessential Quintuplets, but <clears throat> this is more of a shonen. It's published by Shonen Jump in um, America, you know, the Shonen Jump brand. And it's an interesting read. It reminds me of Blue Exorcist, but with more of a vampiric twist. I know it's shocking, right? Considering it's called the vampiric name. But I was like avoiding it for the longest time, and I actually do really like it. Well, not really, really like it, but I like it, you know? I actually like it more than Blue Exorcist. Twin Star Exorcist, 17 and 18. They have some of the coolest spines, in my opinion, where it goes black and white like that, alternating. This one I watched the anime of. I'm still trying to get um, the manga in, but like they've been out of stock with number two and I think four for like ever. So I'm just waiting to get that to come in so I can keep reading these. You know, and pick up from where they, well not pick up from, but read past from when the anime left off. Or where I left off in the anime. The anime actually I think is finished. And they made up the non-canonical ending. <clears throat> but it was really good from... Well, not really good, again. I like to say really good, I guess. It was pretty good, though, from what I watched. I definitely recommend, like, trying to give it a read. Dragon Quest Monsters Plus, 3 to 5. 5 is the last volume. New Kid on the Block. So that's the characters from Dragon Quest 2 right there. I believe that's Terry. It's the final battle time. Okay, okay. So, you know, there's not much time left, so what could be next? Is it gonna be Devil's Part-Timer? You know it. So, I'm a pretty big fan of Devil's Part-Timer. I was in denial, and I thought that the anime was gonna come back. The next thing I knew, there was like over 15 volumes worth of Devil's a Part-Timer manga, and I was like, alright, I'm gonna just buy this. <laughs> I believe that the anime actually leaves off at like volume four or five, so you know we got some uh, we got some material here to get through. So I'm excited to get through this. I've got no idea who the little kid is that he has on the later covers, or this cover actually number seven even. I think that's him in the hero Emil's child, but I don't I don't know. So I'm really excited by this mysterious character, and hopefully they really shake things up because I really like a good shake-up in The Devil's a Part-Timer. I think it adds some more comedy. But essentially what Devil is a Part-Timer is, oh my god, he's buff. Anyways, is that um, the devil is reborn, he escapes his final battle and goes to another world. And in this world, he's a part-timer. The hero then follows him to this, part, to this other world. And she works at like a business. And she's trying to find the devil. She finds the devil, finds out he's a part-timer and he's not doing shit. Just keeps an eye on him. And he actually ends up saving the world multiple times from people. And we got a switch up here in the music. Monk, monk, monk. So that's number 11. Whoops. I guess he has to fight the angels now, which is going to be interesting. It like shows a interesting question of morality in this um, 
kind of a show series because the hero starts to not know who's good. Is it actually the devil or is it actually the broke order, the church? Number 14 and 15. So it's interesting how this girl ages. It seems pretty fast. So I'm very intrigued by her. And that is it for now. Bye bye. We'll see you guys in the next video where I unbox the last few boxes of January. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye.